Hello everyone, I am tessellating hexagons and hey look we got the star, we got 100% complete, but we only have 14 yarn balls. My main, like my personal playthrough has 32, so we have some stuff to attend to in this episode. So welcome back to Hat in Time, specifically welcome back to what is probably going to be the last episode until the update, and oh look we have a thing that's just the entire present is an intruder. So yeah, in the last episode we beat the final boss and had a fantastic time, in this episode Basically just clean up, but somehow this is boarded back up again. Whoever the whoever knees. That changed colour. So we're basically done. And this episode is just gonna be a bit disjointed as I go around everywhere to just get everything that's still missing. So any compass badge items that I haven't yet found, uh, buying the last two badges from Archerdeld. There it is. Uh, getting this, obviously. We have just a, a bonus hat. See, when I got this in my personal playthrough, I thought, oh, this is going to guide me to something, and sure enough, it has locked onto something, but don't get your hopes up. Though it does kind of point us towards where we're going next anyway, so yeah, it's now the completionist kid's hat, because we've got all 40 timepieces. I'm assuming that points us towards, uh, no, that only spawns if you get all 40 timepieces. It might just be if you beat the final boss, I don't know, but yeah. Unfortunately, it is just directing us towards Mafia Town, but that's fine. We're going there anyway, so that being the case, I shall equip the Time Stop hat. I shall pop on... Uh, we don't really need the Magnet Badge anymore, but it's going to bother me if I see Poms that I don't get. Like, I'm not going to go after them manually, but still. So we're done with everything here. You could you could take the tutorial away anytime. Thank you, game. So I'm going to go into the Golden Vault mission, just because that's my go-to one for wandering around Mafia Town. And basically, I'm going to kind of cut and speed around while I find the remaining hidden stuff, and I'll, I will will talk at you when I find them, so uh, enjoy my bumblings. I don't remember these switches existing, so what's this going to do? Nothing, because I can't hold them both down. What is this? Oh, there we go, I just did have to... I don't remember this puzzle being here at all. Well, there we go. There is a thing. Is that the only thing here? No, there is more. Cool beans. And there's just a treasure chest on a pier that I've just... have paid no mind to in any... Like, how did I miss this to be completely bean frank? What is bean frank? Layering, yum. And that's it. Those are the only two things I missed. Well, I would cut back to the ship. There is one more thing I want to do here before we leave, so I'll see you there. Archadeld, my guy. Please, disregard my twitchy behavior. My body has been to places that have left a permanent mark. And it's times like these that I'm really glad that um, I can just, I can quit a level and it won't destroy my progress because like some games, if you if you quit a level, then you like you have to beat a level properly in order to get like to keep whatever items you found in that level. And I'm glad this game doesn't do that, just because that's it. We're done with Archdeld and we're done with Mafia Town. So that's chapters one and four completely completed. Except it's going to take a while to pay for because it's expensive. Technically, technically. I have 300 pawns that I shouldn't do because, as I said, I bought the compass badge when it was the map badge. And I believe since this auto equips, it it, it did not. Well, I'll, I'll equip it now just to demonstrate. Just Banjo Kazooie badge. Yeah, yeah, bah, bah. Well then, and that's confirmation that we've run out of Archer Elderies. Can I talk to this mafia over here? Will you entertain my supposition? Or will you just spank me in the face? Oh. Really? All you said was, uh, eat. Oh. Adorable. In a tragic sort of way. And you can tell they're bad badges because they have flies around them. Anyway, I will meet you over in chapter two. Okay, here we are. Dead Bart Studio. And since we're here, I believe this cutscene is completely unchanged, but nevertheless, also, Car park. I don't know if I ever showed this in daylight, but there you go. So, great crazy taxi arrow, show me the way. But also, since we're here, I'm not going to watch this, this cutscene again in full, but... Too big, you moon penguins. <laughs> no. 
If you just double click, but then, like, if you click and then hold down your second click, then you can skip cutscenes, but you have to hold it down. So, I would kind of like to go for the achievement in this run. I don't expect that will happen, because I'm looking for stuff, so I'm going to be a little bit careless here. So, once again, shall we montage? And by montage, I just mean speed up. see that there's a treasure chest on top of there which I never would have found like how what, just how do I get up there though huh. once again I need to have more faith in hat kids ability to jump there we go we we got object and unsurprisingly that's the only thing I missed here well then, I guess I'll see you in Chapter 3! Okay, we out here in Chapter 3. I've gone to Act 4 specifically, because there's something that I need to show you in Act 4. That, I guess, I, I, I think Act 4 is the only time you can get to where this thing is, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. For now, I'm being pointed over here, so I guess I'll speed up until I find what I'm looking for. Okay, is it this? Is this the way? I, I see it up there, but can I get any higher than this, though? Because that's the one thing with Chapter 3. There's a lot of stuff up in the above, and it's not always clear how to get to the above. See, I'm, I'm most of the way there. How make further finish, though? How make further finish, though? Oh, that was nearer than I thought. Yay, perspective. It's another rift token. Now, is there one more? I... See, looking at my totals, yeah, I can see them in the distance now. We have 17, and I feel as though our final total should be divisible by 3. And I say that, but that looks like a ball of yarn. Oh, there's another one over there. See, there's a lot of stuff, especially in this area. So, be aware of the, the nonsense of Chapter 3. And those hands aren't affected by the... That's... Everything is sad. <laughs> I love how it took a moment to register that I'd even... <sighs> Ooh, we have a puzzle, he says in his not Professor Layton voice, because I'm sure, Hat Kid, that's exactly what I wanted. Leave me, hands. We need to throw this at that, and I, re I remember getting this in my personal playthrough, and it, I just never came back for it in, in this run, apparently. Well done, Hat Kid. I, I, apparently that was good enough. Okay, sure. Okay, fine. Okay, Daddy. That was necessary. Okay, Sprint Yarn, which we totally don't need. But yeah, there is still that one up there, which is more yarn! <laughs> but we need another Rift Token! There's just a chest here. And it's more yarn! I don't even recognize this upper area. Should I be commentating over it? Because I feel like I've come to the end of it. 
There's so many stuff and things. Oh. <laughs> well, this looks promising, but I can't really commentate over it just in case I'm entirely wrong. But let it be known at least that it's not entirely lost on me that the uh, the purple rift of here is referred to as Sleepy Subcon, and I think Subcon is the canonical name for the uh, uh, the world that Super Mario 2, otherwise known as Doki Doki Panic, takes place in. So I get it, because that whole game was a dream. I think it was that one anyway. Yeah, because because three was the stage play and two was the dream one. Okay, yes. That's a lot of ponds. Well, that station's over there. We're going all around the houses, but not to the milkman. Yeah, how much I love my milk, man. Oh, and there's more stuff over here as well. Oh, we need to go in so many flavors of direction, but there's... Hmm. Bear with. Yeah, don't say. Such as this area, which I've also never found before, Hat Kid. Are you having a moment? This also appears as though it's... Okay, finally, that's how we get to the this one. But there's a second one just around the corner from it. There's so much shit up here! That was a series of face noises. I make those frequently. Now, is there anything else in this vicinity, or is there just that shack that we saw before? Also, is there anything in the subcon well? Well done, Hat Kid. You ate a noodle and went to Paris on a subway train. Haha, <laughs> 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 that was not supposed to work, but it did. Okay, so there's something in here. So we just need to find a way of icing the break. So where's the noodle that we need to... But okay, first of all, where's the apple? Second, where's the noodle that we need to possess said apple? You're going to come to life and attack me. God, the, that's the thing with chapter three. It, it's the chapter that keeps on giving. There's just so much shit that like, you're never going to see unless you look everywhere. So you're welcome for this bonus episode in which I do exactly that. Oh, you're up in the tro- oh, there's trees. Oh, I see it. I see it, and there was a mushroom there the entire time. Boing. Boing incorrectly. I hope this is entertaining to watch, because, like, this is, like, satisfying a major itch of mine to get this game, like, 100%ed as possible. And the compass badge is so much more helpful and conducive to making that happen. It is a rift token, yay, than the map badge ever was, because the map badge was kind of hard to... There's more. The map badge was kind of hard to follow, but with this, it gives me a straight answer. Is there more to find? Yes, no. And that incentivizes me to finish what I started. Hmm... Oh, I see it. I don't remember this area going quite this high up before, because I could swear we've been here before, and it didn't go up this high. So... Well, doesn't matter. We're here now. We have ascended the throne. The throne of lits, another rift token. That throws my maths right out the window. How many more things are... There's still more! Chapter 3, the chapter that keeps on giving! Oh, now that's just frustrating. So, the, the the compass badge pointed me in here, and now I'm in here, it's not showing me, like, so it, it is in the outside then? Also, did I ever show that? Because, that. Well. Yep, yeah, that shouldn't affect me anymore because we don't have the contract, but it still does. Now, what I wanted to show... Since we're here, and I will have to come back, but since we're here, if you go between these, not these ones, is it the next ones, then crawl, then you just, you just appear right at the top of the manor. That's, I, th I believe that's there for speedrunners, but I feel like that would be considered like an illegitimate trick. Like that's, that seems a tad unfair. So that is a trick. I was indeed aware of it when I did the, uh, the main episode covering this timepiece, but obviously there's collectibles within the manor, and judging by the, the compass badge, I've got them, so I'm gonna need to come back again. Fun. But yeah, that is a way you can cheese that mission if you don't like facing Queen Vanessa.
Oh, by the way, since we're in Subcon Forest at the moment, there's just one thing that I want to add that I couldn't really think to slip in anywhere else. If you check the back of the contract at any point where the Snatcher tries to show you a contract, or foists a contract upon you rather, if you walk around behind it and look up close, you can see some fine print in fancy writing that's next to illegible, but it reads, I hereby totally agree to do this Snatcher dude's dirty work, and also absolve him of all injuries I will most likely sustain from this work. Also, I'll give up my soul, no takey backsies. So that's why his flimsy contracts have so much power over you, because we didn't read the fine print. I knew about this, I just couldn't find a moment to slot it in in a non-incongruous way. So there you go. Anyway, as we were. Oh, that is evil. That is devious and evil, and how dare you, Jonas Scherliv, if I'm even saying your name right, I don't speak Danish. So you have to cheese your, like, eat a geometry abuse your way onto the mansion, and then climb up inside of that. What the fuck is this? Well then. But that is everything in chapter three, which bothers me because that's 20 rift tokens, and we need 21 in order to, either there's, there's a, like, on the plus side, there definitely aren't any in the manor. I'm gonna check the subcon well, and, uh, well, why would there be one in there? Hmm. This is gonna bother me now. Well, see you back on the ship, by the way. Huh. Well, wherever the compass badge was directing me to in the previous episode is no longer here, so either it was that one from Mafia Town, or it was pointing me to the Rift Token indoors. Either way, yeah, I am entirely out of ideas then. So that's the opening cutscene that you get when you boot up the game after having beaten everything. It, it just... You get a, a slow pan out, and it's lovely. Also, I don't expect anything to be up here, but I've noticed how the the, the mail room is now... Sorry, rumor. This room is now just secreting letters. This I did not know about! Do you not have voice lines? Wait. Why aren't you voiced at all? Oh, this is the mods thing. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm glad I was informed of this, but w where is the, the time rift that used to be in here, though? Like, they don't just disappear, and yet this one appears to have disappeared. Well, whatever. In that case, I believe that apart from turning in our, uh, our rift tokens, apart from the two we're going to have left over, apparently, uh, we'll, we'll see what we get from this. And then I'll hand over to me from a substantial point in the future uh, with the conductor as a boss. Fine, I'll take this one so you'll stop trying to give it to me. Minty fresh, it looks like garbage toilet water. Like, it looks alright on her, but just the the sprite of it isn't all that encouraging. Uh, I didn't mean to accept it, but sure, fine. Just give me all of the things, even though I'm sure there are more things than we can actually afford. Uh, 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 that's just a ribbon. It's not even that much of a flare. I, I kind of want that, but I, I want better stuff than hat flares. That's cute. Come on. Fine, I'll take the cute thing. Oh, it's... It, it's like some sort of panda octopus thing. I'm weirdly okay with this. I want like a remix or something. Stop trying to give me hair! Stop trying to give me hair. See, that there's a... Mm, there's a a, a... a... chapter 2 remix in there somewhere. FINE! <laughs> it's cute because I like the, the corsage, which appears to be like a carnation or something. That, that, it's cute, it's lovely, it's fine. Wow, it's re it really wants to give me that... that. Fine, just to get it out of the system. I'm sure in having accepted that, I'm now out of tokens. Yeah, lovely. Well, if if there are more, I'll I'll look into the possibility of there being more. But other than that, allow me to just dequip all of my hat flares because I am not about the flared hat life. And uh, I'll rejoin you shortly, just to say. Hey, this is what happens when you fight Mr. Man Guy, so I'm gonna take this color off as well. I prefer Hat Kids natural colors. So see you in just a moment. Okay, before we get to that rude, I did have one last idea about where I may have missed, and 
if I'm wrong, you won't be seeing this footage at all. I thought we already did this, and that's why I didn't check it, but if I pull on the ice hat and pound on this, we have a secret room full of gold. And sure enough, sure enough, back here is the last rift token. Holy wow. As I said, my bad. I thought I'd already shown this off, but apparently not. So there's ladders if you want to go back out that way. And does this door work? It does not. It is a fake door. Well, that's just sad. But now we have that rift token I was craving. We could actually spend our last rift tokens. I would cut, but what's the point when I can just do this and just leave without any consequence? <sighs> we did it, fam. We have finally... Okay. We've not entirely beaten the game simply because... Yeah, you know, we need to spend our last rift tokens, and unless you use mod rift tokens, which obviously you get from mods, you can't get absolutely everything from this vending machine, I think. So let's make this last one worth it. It's a remix, so I'll take it. Yum. So, there we go. That's as complete as we can now be. There are no more rift tokens left in the game, naturally. So, that's it. We're done. So, I would cut, but actually I have some stuff to say. So I'm going to pop over now to uh, main menu, thank you to the other save file that I've been playing through, because that's something that I needed to do over the past couple of days while I was working on this video, where I played through the game again from the beginning, just hastily making my way through it, just so that I could get a save file ready that would allow me to show the other version of the Chapter 2 boss. So that's where that is. This file is now completely done. I don't know where the yarn ball discrepancy came from. That I cannot explain at all whatsoever. But whatever, maybe it's because this is post-update and that's pre-update, I don't know. Anyway, we'll head into this version of reality, where we're substantially behind the times. And in this version of reality, I actually got two achievements that I couldn't do in my main playthrough or on my own time. So I got the one for beating Subcon well without falling into the water, because you need the hookshot badge in order to complete uh, Chapter 2. And I got the achievement for... Uh, not falling into the crowd during the big parade. I also managed to, during the big parade, get a score of nothing. I'm so proud of that. Like, look at how much the conductor has won by in this version of reality. Okay, I admit it. I rigged this one. Also, I found out that if you spit on your pop filter, if you accuse the cardboard cutout of your aunt and murder on the Owl Express, then it's voiced by DJ Grooves, and it's just precious, and I don't have time to show that. That's something you can do on your own time, but yes. Big parade. I got a score of nothing. I'm so proud of that. So, let's hope the game doesn't crash this time and head into... Yeah, there we go. The conductor, confirm him as the winner. He's kind of smug about it. <laughs> as opposed to his dancing is kind of obnoxious. You sure you want him to win? As a matter of fact, I do. So let's go and see how he's holding up in this version of reality where Express Owls, I believe those were penguins before, so yeah, you know. Conductor, are you being a graceful winner? Thank you, thank you. Oh, you're too kind. No, no, please. Keep going. Oh, Lassie, it's you. I did it. I won the annual Bear Movie Award once again. Oh, imagine that face DJ Grooves must be pulling now, eh? <laughs> Here, take this tiny insignificant movie prop to match your tiny insignificant efforts in securing my victory. Yeah, I can probably sell it on eBird for dimes and nickels. You say tiny and significant, but that's the effort I put into the... Well, okay, that's not entirely true. What? You're expecting more or something? Forget it. Go, shush, get out of here. I never want to see your ugly mug again. That's fine, I don't even have eyes anyway. Okay, I put maximum effort into getting minimal... Pad kid, you are right up in the camera, do you even realise? I'm glad I got that on recording. So, that's his winner's speech. And, well, you, you know how chapter two goes from here. Oh, could this be? Ah, yes. While we're here, I should show this off because it has changed from what I showed in the Let's Play because, of course, an update happened. So, first of all... Fun fact, in this version of reality, uh, Mustache Girl never gave me that speech. I, I didn't, I, I was too busy rushing through the game, I didn't speak to her, and I think that opportunity is now gone, so I'm locked out of a piece of yarn that she gives for tutorial purposes. Oh, 
I did wonder if they were going to update that description, but no, see, now it costs 400, so that is a thing. Anyway, plot twist, phone. You don't say. See, it's subtle, but it's different. Also, I I could swear that before it said he's gonna break it, and this time it said he's going to break it. Well, whatever. I'm going to, to go through this like 20 minute mission to uh, see you at the boss. I kind of want to show the random bits of blurb that the conductor will have, because you know how we heard uh, DJ Grooves talking in the previous version of this stage, and I couldn't subtitle it, so it's it's whatever. I'll just meet you at the boss of this, and it will be the same but different. So join me in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. As promised, here we are at the end of Dead Bird Studio Act 6 version. We're here, and we're going down in the lift. Just, I thought I'd cut back in here. So don't get your hopes too far up, because everything's exactly the same. It's just with a different coat of paint, but still, there's the artwork for it. And while I'm fighting this boss, I will talk about some other stuff as well, since this is technically the closing of this project. But hey, look, different arena, technically. Hi, conducty boy! <laughs> Look who we've got here. I guess you've found my little basement, eh? I love that portrait behind him, like the wanted poster. That's so cute. This last time piece is all mine. If you want it, you're gonna have to take it from me cold, dead hands. I don't think he realizes just how beautiful that wording is. This last time piece, i.e. the only permutation of time piece that I have not gotten on camera yet. Well said, Conductor, well said. Oh, and the boss just immediately starts. I did not realize that would be a thing that happened. Anyway, it functions exactly the same as the fight with DJ Grooves. It's just visually different, except that attack, which is the same. So that makes more sense because it's studio lights, whereas before I could swear it was um, just more disco balls. I don't know. Oh, I missed. Oh, well. I, I guess maybe it's harder because it's got a smaller hitbox. And I still stand by uh, what... The, like what I was saying earlier in the project. It's easier to get DJ Grooves as the, as the boss here. I don't care what the internet says. I had to make a concerted effort. That, I, I apologize to be quiet for that line. Now, I was talking about how... How I didn't want to, like, show my, like, run through the version of this level that I just did just because you've seen it all before, and I, I couldn't make out any of what DJ Grooves was saying, uh, wh like, when we heard his muffled, ominous dialogue. Well, I did manage to make out at least something for the effect of, oh, do we still have the bombs from that one train shoot? Ah, well, don't throw them out just yet. I can't believe I let you be the star of my movie! I'm going to save it just in case uh, a certain someone shows up, or so something like that. So... I got some ambient dialogue. Notice how some of the attacks work so much better with uh, DJ Grooves' everything. And some work better with the conductor. It sort of shows the duality of this boss. Also, it's a shockwave attack. I'm, I was never not going to take some damage from that. Okay, other things. I did wonder, back when I did this level the first time, there was a certain uh, moon penguin that was, like, just wandering around being necessitating stealth. That was still a moon penguin in this version of, of the level as well. And uh, what else did I... What else did I... Legs. Um, How could you do this to me, lassie? I feel like I didn't give DJ Grooves' lines anywhere near as much focus when I did this in the main Let's Play. Oh, it's also a moon penguin on the piano still. There's so much duality at play here. Let's have a little heart to heart. Have a seat, lassie. There's something else I noticed, and it's gonna bother me that I can't remember what it is. Anyway. Ever since you arrived on this planet, these time pieces have been falling from the sky. Now, I can understand if you feel they belong to ye. I get it. But did you know I can rewind time? With one time piece, 
I could reclaim the trophy that belongs to me. That's right, the loss of award 42. I got second place at the 42nd Annual Baird Awards. Me? Can you imagine? EJ Cruz managed to get the first place trophy. I need just one timepiece to fix this mistake. Can't you spare just one timepiece? Oh, you're a greedy young lass, aren't you? I just need a single one, and you won't share. Well, if you want this timepiece back so bad, come and get it! Gladly. Oh, wait, it's the bottom situation again. Sad face. So the thing I was trying to remember, I'm going to get interrupted again, so there's no point in me even saying it. Hi. Remember this little bomb? This time, it's attached to you instead of me lovely train. <laughs> I do feel like the conductor isn't really voiced by a Scots person. And his lines weren't written by a Scots person either. Like, they're doing a, a good approximation, but not perfect. Like, they, they keep using yer in the wrong context. It, like, there are bits that I can tell as someone who is one quarter Scottish. And that that's not a bullshit American pie chart of, oh, well, I'm so-and-so percent whatever. It, like, when, when you ask where an American is from, they will just give that instead of just saying they're from the USA. But no, like, literally, my grandfather is from Glasgow. I've never been there personally, but I'm at least, like, I have direct heritage rather than just whatever, anecdotal. So I can tell. Cool and good. Also, I've been paying no attention to the timer in the corner. And good thing I was in that counter-attack phase there, otherwise I would have taken damage. But why did he just run around like that? It's crazy. Anyway, the thing I was trying to remember is there was something that I, like, that there was a thing I could react to, like a, a thing I could go up to and press E on in, like, in the level preceding this boss. And I missed it in my original playthrough. I checked it and it was, well, I'll put it on screen now to cover up my abysmal playing of this level, or boss, whatever. I think that's everything I wanted to say in terms of stuff I wanted to recount. DJ Grooves, could you hurry up, please? Ready. Come here. See, th in this version of reality, you're so much more agreeable. Anyway, we've been debombed. Cool and good. See, this, this, it doesn't really make sense either way because they're express owls, but then the moon band were express owls as well. So, I don't know. You can see the duality of this boss, how some parts of it work for one director better than for the other. Well, whatever. It is clever, and I'm glad I got to show it, because most Let's Players wouldn't bother. I just care that much about this game. But that does mean that, with the beating of this boss, that is the end of, of A Hat in Time as a series on my channel. So, I guess I should give some closing thoughts as I deliver the last few hits. See, that's somehow less jarring, because, like, we know he swears, like, his dying words are just peck neck, whereas DJ Grooves is a slightly more gut-wrenching, I hate you, darling! But anyway, this series is over for now. It will come back later down the line, when the updates are released that contain the additional two chapters, because I believe there are two more chapters that will be added to the game that just aren't in it yet. So I will come back and finish this Let's Play when those become available. Also, I am not opposed to doing some mods as well. We'll have to see exactly what that entails, but I'm going to repair this just to show what happens if you put... Like, I'm curious. I want to see what happens if you, if you put those in the wrong order. That's beautiful. I love it. Well, this is the wonky world where everything's wrong, so... Mm, that hurts my soul to see it left like that, though, so... I'll, I'll just I'll just keep it bare. But, and be stuck in the spot for a second. Okay, so yes, this is a really good game. Apart from when you get stuck underneath a plinth for some reason. And I was right in the previous episode, the Steam Summer Sale started when I said it would. Uh, there's also a promotion running for just this week, where if you follow the A Hat in Time Twitter account and retweet it, then you can get this game for free, maybe? You, you could win it. And uh, that's about it. This is a very good game, I do recommend it. I, I would personally charge a bit less for it, but I'm not in charge of that, and maybe it'll become worth it when the later chapters are added, because honestly, my only complaint about this game is that it's so short that there are only 40 time pieces. Because if chapters 5 and 6 were included in the game as standard, I think that would justify the price. But 
that aside, this is a very, very good game. I can't really say anything else that I haven't already said in the previous episode during the credits, but it's a good game, and if you enjoy games like this, then you should absolutely play it. So, that being said, I have been, will continue to be, Tessellating Hexagons, and at some point in the future we will come back to it, because there is more stuff to cover that just doesn't exist yet, but for now, I shall sign out once and for all from A Hat in Time. Thank you very much for watching, if indeed you still are.